Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special fun day edition of this, this thing that we're doing. Okay, uh, as you see, I have a set of buns on the screen, and uh, we're going to uh, expound upon that and uh, take that further. So, uh, I drew this from a model of a guy who was doing God knows what, uh, and I, I drew it wrong. Um, for one thing, he's he's bigger than this, and uh, but I currently don't have that model right in front of me because just like 60 seconds ago, Stellar popped her head in the room and said, "Are you doing a video today?" And I went, "Oh!" And uh, so <laughs> I'm uh, I've taken myself off guard again. It's a uh, it's nice when you can surprise yourself. So, all right. So this guy doesn't necessarily look terribly like the model that I had, but that's all right. I can't show you the model, so you'll never know. And uh, I've got to give him an opponent. Uh, so he's... I don't really know what this arm is doing. I can just barely see his elbow sticking out there. Um, and he was not holding a sword, but he is now. And uh, what else? Gotta give him an opponent. Um, assuming his eyesight, and I'm I'm making a little line where I think he's looking, um, and it's in this soft fine charcoal, so I can erase it pretty easily. But I would like for his opponent's eyeballs to be right about there, you know, so that they're looking each other in the eye. Um, and, uh, of course, you know, he could have his head in this position and, and be looking a range of ways, but not a huge range. I mean, if you were really engaged in action, your, your head is pretty much pointed, uh, you know, towards whatever it is that's got your attention. So, um, so I want to uh, have him pointing at this, and I don't know what this is. You know, this is a crazy thought, just crazy. But he could be fighting uh, a person. Yeah, some guy. He could be fighting some dude. And so I'm going to go with that just because it's just a crazy thought. And I'm going to have said dude. Uh, his head is tilted here. And he's got... Uh, he's got a staff in his hand. A dramatic pose, you know. You can play around with goofy poses with this, uh, this fine charcoal stuff. Uh, even more. I think he's a sorcerer. I think he's got a magic, uh, magic staff here. Whole staff of magicians to fight Ned. So yeah.
evil sorcerers, of course, and Ned doesn't go around beating up on Dumbledore or Gandalf. Merlin. Merlin's kind of up in the air. If you read those stories, you you kind of have your doubts about Merlin after a while. You're like, I'm not sure he's a good guy. Um, those stories are, of course, a garbling of, of other stories, older stories. And yeah, they get, uh, they get kind of morally ambiguous in a few places uh, by our standards. Somebody's saying something. Uh, Cece says, hi. Stiller says, I was wondering where everyone else... Say, I was a minute late. I just figured everybody's just... Screw him. He's, he's not going to do it. He's late. Because I'm usually so punctual. Okay. So I've got... Uh, Ned versus the Sorcerer. I was just uh, thinking earlier that... You know, I've got these books I'm putting together, and I'm calling, I'm using the word sword and sorcery a lot. Um, uh, it's, it's a more specific word than just fantasy. You know, the word fantasy could be Tolkien. Um, and it can also be Conan. But I don't think sword and sorcery could be Tolkien. Definitely going in. Um, but uh, sword and sorcery as a genre is more uh, it's more the kind of low stakes fantasy that you know it's I mean it's important for the the character you know, his life is on the line. Probably a lot of people's life is on the line, but it's not. Um, he's not saving the world. You know, he's maybe he's killing the dragon and saving a village. Okay, but he's not saving. It, it's not the ultimate battle between good and evil. Um, it's not. Uh, it's not. <clears throat> you know, this iconic event that defines you know the history of the world from that point on it's just it's more like uh, some nasty guy kidnapped a girl and ran off with her and so the hero's got to go bash his head in and get her back and um <clears throat> assuming she doesn't do it on her own in the, in the meantime and so yeah that's it's ultimately the difference between they often call uh, uh, Lord of the Rings high fantasy and you would have to include uh, that TV show is King Game of Thrones you'd have to include that in high fantasy because you know it's the whole dang world, and the fate of the universe is, is uh, hanging in the balance, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's kind of hand, even though it's very grim. It's not as pretty as as Tolkien. It's still high fantasy. Just in case you give a crap about any of that stuff. I seriously do not like the way these two lines are completely parallel to each other. I don't like that. Uh, this goofy made-up body doesn't bother me too much because I'm going to uh, I'm going to cover them up in cloaks. Wizards wear cloaks. That's just how it is. Barbarians wear loincloths. Lizard, wizards. Wizards wear cloaks. It's the rules. Um,
Yeah, Sissy says, I don't know, Dumbledore allowed underage students to participate in potentially deadly challenges, maybe nudging Matthew around a bit. Yeah, there's a little bit of moral ambiguity to Dumbledore as well. Um, a lot, actually. I mean, the final book, doesn't he just basically let Harry get killed? Uh, um, uh, anyway. Um, Sissy, you were editing lo Lost Track of Time. That's funny because I was editing and lost track of time. I was making books and completely lost track of what I was doing. I'm going to drop this sword down a little bit so it's more like yay. And then maybe that will be more, so that's more that way. Maybe his staff will be more upright. Try that with my blind track. Let's see. That. I like that better. Swords more, more horizontal. Yeah, see, so it's, it's not, uh, I mean, I kind of wanted to do it like that. And I nixed that plan, but maybe I should go back to that plan. Let's go, go back to that plan. All right. If you haven't noticed, I'm just sitting here talking to myself for the most part. All right. So, and on stick. Let's face it, magicians just have no scruples. <laughs> have you ever met a magician at scruples? No, you have not. No, you have not. I, uh, every now and then I talk, I'll, I'll talk about something in this world that I'm making up, you know. Be like, oh, I had this idea about how magic could work or something. And somebody will go, No, that's not how paganism works. You know, that's not how Wicca goes. <laughs> like, I don't give a crap. That's your fantasy, not mine. You know, I'm making, I'm writing my own. You know, it's just like, it's. It's not how Jesus works. That's not how voodoo works. I don't care. It's not what I'm doing. But I was working on these books and I used the word sword and sorcery and just realized I don't really depict sorcery very often. I, I depict uh, lots of swords, uh, lots of people hacking and slashing with swords, lots of monsters. It's all definitely fantasy. Alternate world type of thing. Not necessarily uh, sorcery. I want to make it clear that there's magic.
This is one big buff wizard, I think. Let's get his work cut out for him. I want him to be tall. I don't necessarily want him to be massive. I'm just fussing with this enough to know that the legs are in the right place so that when I draw the cloak, the cloak will be in the right place. So, I don't need it to be very clean or very accurate, you know, not detailed. Um, that's not going to matter. I am going to put shadows in. Um, big mistake to wait until you've drawn the clothing and then and then say you're going to put the shadows in. Put the shadows in first. That way they're just already there, and then you start putting some clothes on, and and you you've already got shading to guide you with things like. You know, if there's a scene and you're going along, you're like, okay, there's a shadow right here. That means the scene turns, you know, it goes around, goes around the body, goes around whatever contour I've already drawn. Sissy says, I have finished five of my ten sessions from yesterday, halfway there. Jesus, you did, you did ten photography sessions yesterday? You're awesome. That's amazing. I did not do 10 of anything yesterday. I did possibly 10 naps. I don't know. I did so close to nothing. It was just about nothing. Yeah. All right, this guy's got long, long sleeves, the kind that get caught on the handle of your frying pan, so you knock things on the floor, the kind that get caught up in candles and you light yourself on fire. It's really impractical. Being a, a sorcerer is very impractical. I don't know why anybody does it. That and wearing a bathrobe in the morning, that's similar. It's practically the same thing. At least I catch myself on fire and, and knock the frying pan on the floor.
making up a human whole cloth is completely different from making up a monster. It doesn't matter if the monster doesn't look right. Monsters always look right. They look like whatever you say they look like. But humans, even evil wizardly humans, kind of have to look like evil wizardly humans. Um, yep, uh, Scott says, sorry I'm late. Scott, Scott, what am I going to do with you? You're late all the time. Um, Sissy says, yes, I did. That's 10 photography sessions yesterday. That's the best part about, shoot, I go somewhere and I stay there and I see clients all day. Little driving, a lot of work, love it. Uh, shoot, it sounds like a trademarked something. Is it like a, a website you get together, like people that need photography done, just set up a time and a place with a photographer and you all get together and do your thing? Um, I'm guessing, but it sounds like, it. yeah, that's, that's amazing. I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you're doing that and and I hope that you're getting paid doing that. But it sounds like fun. A while ago, I found a site that had uh, a bunch of really elaborate, cool um, ceremonial costumes from Mongolia, and uh, and I saved a bunch of pictures uh, because, as far as I'm concerned, they all looked like wizards. Uh, they were guys with long, long white beards and long cloaks that were highly decorated. Uh, uh, they look like wizards or uh, or like a medieval version of Santa Claus or something, you know, um, with, uh, it's just really cool outfits. Um, and I will probably go find wherever I kept those because I kept a bunch of them and, uh, and use that to further his costume. So, uh, and, and, Sharon is also late. Happy Monday, Sharon, and maturity is overrated. Hell yeah. Um, or at least, uh, I may as well say so because, uh, I have no access to any, uh, to any maturity. And I've got to indicate somehow that this wizard is a wizard, not just an old guy with a goofy costume and a stick. So, um, so I want, I want some, some magic, magic. Uh, should it be coming from his staff or from his hand? 
we've kind of already established that the center of the attention is right around here. You know, these two guys are looking at each other. And uh, so the magic kind of happens, you know, if there's lightning going zap or anything like that. Uh, I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to like some bright, hot light up, way up here. This is my thing. So, that being the case, That being the case, he really should have the staff down. Down. This is going to be one of those drawings that gets erased and redrawn until it's just beat to hell. And uh, uh, let me see. Uh, Shoot is a company that hires photographers. They set up the locations, take care of the advertising, schedule clients, and all the other BS that comes with running a business. The sessions are 30 minutes each, and I get paid. That's amazing. That's totally amazing. Um, for a ball of energy in the wizard's left hand. Yeah. Wurbly dribbly. Yeah, he's about to throw a wurble dribble at him. I don't want to redo the whole, the whole thing. I don't know, I'm making it up on the fly, in case you couldn't tell. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't know what Stellar's doing in the other room, but she's having a fight with the cat. I can tell that much. And um, it's, it's taking some time, which gives me the impression the cat's actually being and making the bed, and he's under the bed. Ah, she's making the bed, and he's <laughs> underneath the bed. <laughs> launching, how much fun that can be. <laughs> launching counterattacks. Interesting. We were talking to somebody once, and I mentioned having a cat, and had a little kid with him, and the little kid said, what kind of a cat do you have? And I don't know what kind of cats there are, but um, I stood there going, oh, oh I, because uh, I, it's like, I can't say he's a little shit, you know, uh, to this kid. So, uh, I think I eventually said, he's a stupid one. But he's a bit of a shit.
I'm looking at the picture in this in the computer screen and trying to decide if that's even going anywhere. But uh, kind of. Um, so, so I got these cross lines, and I've got this hand that's up. Energy's going over. Maybe it should be coming totally down. I don't know. Sometimes when I'm in doubt, I do things like this. Because I know I want a directional flow of energy kind of that way, and I don't mean that in an esoteric thing. Um, <laughs> Sissy says, if your cat's not a little shit, you're lying. Um, <laughs> as Sharon says, cranky domestic short hair. That's, yeah, that's about right. That's about, um, and so, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I don't mean anything es esoteric by lines of energy, you know, we're not talking something mysticism or something, it's just, uh, you know, if you throw a punch, that's a line of energy down, you know, the, the length of your arm. And sometimes something's not literally happening just yet on screen, but I want to suggest that this is where things are going. So uh, sometimes there's even a color in the background or something, you know, a swoosh um, that, uh, you know, the the flow, the, the reason I flow the hair like that sometimes and his hair and his robe, um, you know, is to kind of, you know, exaggerate that thing that I make me say the energy's going this way, the violence is going, is, is moving in a particular direction. And so, uh, yeah, so that's what I mean when I say stuff like that, that sounds spiritual. There's no spiritual here. You have to go somewhere else for that. Um, People will say things to me every now and then, you know, that's, that my work is deeply spiritual. I don't think so. I mean, you're, you're free to make it into whatever it is you want to make it into, you know, for yourself. You could say, I'm, I'm going to apply a deep spiritual meaning to all of this because because I want to. Um, I hope it's not too disappointing to learn that. Uh, for me, no. There's no... There's no spiritual here. There's just... Uh, just goofing off. Whoosh. But he said I was an old soul one once. I don't know how you'd know that. Yeah, I mean, even if that's a real thing, I don't know. How do you know? How do you know how old somebody's soul is? Anyways, I said, no, I'm just old. Just old. I've got a soul that's about the same age as the rest of me. Which is freaking old.
this picture is probably going to change a lot. Let's we'll give him a magic stone because what the hell? That's what wizards have, isn't it? Some arcane looking metal working thing like a staff. Come here. My cat's coming. Come here. Now it's going to be a shit. Um, so yeah. So yeah. There's uh, there's Ned battling the mess. Ned battles a mess. Uh, which uh. Allegorically enough, I've been battling a mess lately too, um, but not very strenuously. Um, every now and then I start cleaning the house and then I realize this is working, I'm tired, and I stop. Um, but uh, when, when this whole quarantine thing started, I did some pathological cleaning and, uh, and I got tired. and. Um, I haven't done any pathological cleaning since then. I kind of had the idea that this is going to be the most sterile environment in the world because I'm just going to scrub every inch of it <coughs> multiple times. And uh, that has not actually transpired. Uh, and I don't know that the danger is any less than it was back then. It's just that I got sick of it. Didn't do it. Um, I'm probably the only one, though. Everybody else's house is is absolutely spit and span. And uh, yeah, yeah. There's probably something else I should have should have been mentioning today. Um, yeah, one thing about one thing I, I should mention today is that I won't be here tomorrow. Um, we're gonna go to the arboretum. And I, yeah, very much that we'll be back uh, by three. I also doubt that we're staying out late, but uh, we're going and we're staying until we're done and then coming home. And so, uh, so yeah, yeah, that should be fun. Uh, it's outdoors. Weather's going to be gorgeous. Um, I will not be gorgeous, but I'll be outdoors. And... Um, it's good. So I will see you probably on Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday. Uh, a couple of people are confessing that uh, that uh, their house may be also not absolutely hospital clean um, or hospital filthy. I don't know. Um, so uh, I bet it's cleaner than mine. That's just... You know, I'm not here to get in any contests, but, uh, you know, uh, nobody's a worse housekeeper than me. Nobody. And so I will, in fact, have fun at the Arboretum. Thank you. And um, I, I do I do like it there. And every time I go, I carry a watercolor set that I never use. But maybe I'll use it this time. Who knows? And... Uh, uh, Sharon says, I'll see you Thursday because I'm hiking on Wednesday. Gosh, us and our busy schedules. Look at us. Um, that's a, that's a retired life for you. Yeah. See, that's how old I am. I have friends who are younger than me who are retired. That is stinking old. All right. Have fun hiking. That sounds great. Um, and I'll see the rest of you tomorrow-ish. Bye.